What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Just Dale from The Wrong Agenda, and this is your March 17th weekly recap. If you don't know what the weekly recap is here, I talk about some of the major stories from the wrongagenda.com website and sometimes some other things. I don't know what was on my mind. All right, let's get right into it. Let's start it off light with the Olympics. 2024 Olympics uh, is coming up this year and it's Women's History Month, right? So let's talk about some women's history. This is the first time in history that the Olympics has a 50-50 male-female split in sports. It's the first time ever. Half and half, down the middle, equal. And um, I think that that's amazing. I like that. It's a great thing. Um, it should have always been this way. We know things happen progression, time, things move slow, but I think it's great. I enjoy watching sports from, um, I just like sports in general. So women's sports, men's sports, they should, they should all have the same opportunities. I think in the Olympics to compete and, um, respectfully I'm here for it and I'm going to be watching a lot and yeah, women's history month. This is a win I think for the world. Um, that's all I really have to say on that. There's a great article on the website. Shout out to uh, uh, the author of Mobiles. He writes some amazing articles there. Check it out. Gives you some details and history about women in the Olympics. Moving on to TV. Power. Who doesn't love power, right? Power, power universe. 50 Cent, producer of Power, as you know, um, announced that he is going to release a new show called Power Origins. This show is going to describe Tommy and Ghost, the main characters from the original Power. Uh, it's going to describe their relationship and how they came into where they're at when we see them in Power. Um, they haven't really given too many details on who's going to be in it, exactly what time is going to take place. I know a lot of fans are hoping that they get to see um, Amari Hardwick back on the show he played james st patrick the main character maybe flash forward voiceovers maybe they'll have him being himself who knows we don't really know where it's going or where it's starting others are speculating that it'll be a crossover or spinoff from raising kanan like you know kanan plays a part in their whole story if you follow the power universe so i don't know they haven't really given much information just to have to tease people and people are all excited what people are not too excited about is Power Book 2 Ghost is it's in his last season. It's his last season. It's a two-part final season, whatever that means. And um, even some of one of the actors, the main actor, Michael Rainey Jr., said that he was somewhat blindsided by the news and he found out when everyone else found out. 50 Cent replied to that with, you don't answer your phone. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's a thing to help promote this last season. Uh, personally, this is my favorite power going on at the current moment. So I'm not too thrilled about it. And uh, oh, shout out to shout out to Lavelle Adams Gray, who plays Drew Todd on the show. He did an interview with us a while back. Y'all check that out. We got to go to the uh power finale like after party right yeah and that's where i met 50 and okay see it's weird again i'm an actor so i guess i like i move in a certain uh environment that i'm expected to see people and like behave right but you gotta understand something okay 50 cent get rid of that trying come on oh three and uh, I mean, basically, shout out to everybody. Anthony Fleming, uh, he plays JP on Power Book Force. He also did an interview with us. The response from the Power Universe has been tremendous. I mean, the fans of this show. I mean, you know fans. There are fans mm -hmm. and then there are Power fans because uh, they are vocal and we love it. So shout out to him and, you know, everyone over there that, that stars and the, the whole Power team. You know, it, it is what it is. a staple in the world now. So, yeah. Like I said, uh, Ghost is my favorite show. Not too happy, but who knows? This whole thing, controversy came when he was ending the original power and then it turned into Ghost, which is essentially a continuation. So I don't know. Maybe we'll have another continuation and uh, Tariq's character will move on to there. I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we got to wait and see. Um, that's it for that. <sighs> the big news of the week. 
mega streamer Kai Sinat and mega everythinger Yay West got into a, I'm not going to call it a beef. It's not a beef, a back and forth. They got into a back and forth over just something so strange to me, but you know, it, it, it's life. And sometimes things in life are strange. So um, basically, Yay or his team sent the streamer Kai Sinat some items and um, these items were clothing, you know, T-shirts. And there was an issue with a pair of sweatpants that were just too large for Kai Sinat. If you know Kai Sinat, he's a small guy. Let me not say that he gets offended. If you know Kai Sinat, he's a big guy, but these pants are really big and he couldn't fit them. And he kind of, you know showed it he's live on stream when he opened it and he's like hey you know what let me just play the clip let's watch the clip let me try these sweats on you are bro he gotta make these yay this not fitting me yay yay Okay, so that's Kai Sinat being Kai Sinat. Um, personally, I didn't think it was too offensive. I think it was it's just him being him. But apparently, Ye took offense to it, and he decided to DM Kai Sinat. And not only DM him, but screenshot the DM and post it on his story, which alerted Kai. His fans alerted him that this post was up, and he went to go read it and show his reaction live on screen. But um, let's, let's, let's look at the text. Don't make no jokes about my clothes when you ain't saying nothing about what Adidas is doing. When Vulture's song came out, you ain't played my verse. You controlled. Don't play with me. <sighs> Was that message a little aggressive? Personally, yeah, I kind of say it was a little forward. I mean, you could have took a minute to kind of understand what's going on. I don't know if someone just sent Yay the clip or if he was actually watching the stream, but I think in the context, he probably would have understood. I would hope outside of context, I understand how it may seem a little like he's trying to make fun. But, you know, if you know him or if you watch it in context, I don't see it that way. He asked for another pair to be sent to him in his size if he really wanted to play the clothing he could have just played this is garbage but anyway that prompted kai to go into a whole thing because he is a fan of yay and it it did seem to actually hurt him while he was on stream i mean he wound up calling his mother and his mother told him you know you got to be nice to yay he's a great man we love yay and i'm, I'm here all for that it's good good words ma good good positive vibes i'm i'm glad we have people like that and he has people like that but he still is a man and a streamer, so he has to stand on business, as they say. So he decided to have a little back and forth, explain himself to Ye. It wasn't really confrontational. Sometimes it got a little, ooh, a little, eh. But y'all got, you can go on the website and check out the full story and, and see the whole video and then get all the details of the text. But forwarding that, it wound up getting to a point where Ye's manager, a man named John Monopoly, called Kai and they had a conversation. And um, being from, okay, the tone of John Monopoly by some I can understand may be taken a certain way. Well, let, let's let's hear it. Hello. Peace, peace. This is John Monopoly, Kanye's manager. How you doing? Sir? How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. You have a brief moment to speak. Yeah, I got, I can speak. I can talk. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm basically hold just. Hold on, hold on, hold on, listen. I'm not finished. Because as a people, I believe we're what uh, strong, clap this one stronger together. You know what I'm saying? So what I think, I think if we respect one another and take the time to communicate from a mature perspective, we can find that we're better when we're aligned. And when we're not aligned, 
that's when things can go left. And I want to keep things centered. And I appreciate you for taking the time and considering these words. All right. Um, my understand that, right? But my, my, you said what? My you understand what? that. My understand that. But you have to understand why the man have come so crazy to me in the first place. Me say the pants don't fit. The pants don't fit. You said what? Hold on, my fault. My pants all just came out. I'm just saying, like, my um. You feel me? I could, I could, whatever he want to do, we could resolve it. I don't care. Um, just due to the fact that, like, I, I was, I had no disrespect. You feel me? And I just feel like, um, what we was going back and forth on was a little, was a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 um, you gonna, um, how can I, how, how can we go about moving forward with this? Um, I think we just need to develop a relationship. You know what I'm saying? I know this is my first time meeting you. This is my first time speaking to you. What city are you from, sir? I'm from the Bronx. Oh, okay. I used to live in the Bronx on 241st well, well, and Carpenter. 241st? That's down the block from my block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 you should, so you should know we don't go for no bullshit. You said what? So you should know that we shouldn't go for no bullshit, no disrespect. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand. Yeah. I, I get it. I lived in New York for seven years. I get it. Okay, and I lived, I lived there all my life. Big homie Chris Lighty from the Bronx. Okay. I'm a, vi I'm a violator. You're a what? I'm a violator. What that mean? Violator, Chris Lighty. You don't know who Chris Lighty is? Nah, gang. You've never heard of Violator Records, Violator Management, 50 Cent? Nah, I was, I was born in 2001. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nah, but yeah, you 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 seem very polite. I respect you first of all for even calling my phone, um, um, and reaching out. It takes a lot. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm just with whatever energy that's coming out to me, I'll, I'll I'll happily just you know display it back. I just don't. I just want us to be. You know, it's it is better for us to be together. You know, than apart. Yeah, so so um yeah um just let just let Ye know I said that um yeah just let him know what I said and. If, however you want to move forward, we can move forward with it, you know? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Where he at, though? We in L.A., but I be in New York all the time. I could actually be in New York tomorrow if we need to link up. You trying to backdoor me? What does backdoor mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, you trying to, like, why you want to link up so fast? Like, I thought we just building a. I, I don't. I don't move slow. Okay. I move mad slow, so we gonna have to get to know each other first. You heard? Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Oh um, no, nah, I now nah, all, right, all, all jokes aside though. Um, appreciate you. This is my number. You can lock me in. Um, yes, sir. You lock me in. My first name is. John. Just, just let, just Last let. Name Monopoly. Okay. Just let, just let. Um. Yeah, just let Gay know. I feel like it was a misunderstanding. Me personally. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and we just, you know, we just move forward from there. Just let me just update me, you heard? All right, I hit you back. Thank you, sir. All right, bro. So the tone of John Monopoly, I'm sure by some people could be taken a certain way, especially speaking to someone who's less than half your age. Um, I also understand, you know, Sometimes things get lost in slang and translation, especially when you're dealing with a generational gap. You know, sometimes people are funny. I don't know this guy. Mm. I watch Kai. I don't know him personally, but I kind of see how he acts towards people in general. I don't think he was meant any disrespect. I do think the the phone conversation was just a little weird. You know, and um, I I get it. And and being a New Yorker, I'm uh, you know originally from Queens, New York. Uh, when I first uh, left and I went to the South, you guys are probably gonna kill me in the comments. I don't, whatever. It is what it is. This is this is this is my truth. So I find that people are generally nicer outside of New York, just from what I what I my experience, and um. I'm a, I feel like I'm a pretty nice person. I'm a pretty joyous person. I'm, I'm personable, respectful, I believe. But I even have gotten into situations where people thought 
that I was uh, or felt that I was coming off abrasive or, you know, aggressive when I was like, you know, it's just how it's just the type of skin that my neighborhood, how, how we came up and uh, where it's at. But certain things can set people off. And I'm glad that nothing got too out of hand here, because given certain types of people and personalities and words and things that could be misconstrued, like the part where he said, I'm a violator. Like, I get it. I understand. I I know what violator is, but I also know what it means to violate someone in the term and how it may sound to someone who doesn't know. So you kind of got to be mindful of that. And I even had to learn that in my experience when speaking to people from different walks of life or generations and things like that, that you kind of like you have to understand the language and understand the tones and mannerisms if you want to have a productive conversation. If you don't care, then you don't care. But if you really want to truly understand, you kind of have to feel that out. And I think this was a feeling out process that was happening live in front of everyone. And so, of course, people are going to have the comments of how people should have handled it. But at the end of the day, I, I, I respect how how Kai handled himself. I think he did really well. Um, like I said, I don't really know much about the John Monopoly guy. And I, I would like to believe and give him the benefit of the doubt that, you know, even though that it may seem some things may seem a certain way that he it really wasn't like that. But, yeah, that's basically that on that. I'm, I'm glad they got to talk it out. Me personally, I would have loved for yay because he was writing and posting these messages on his page to actually speak to Kai and hash it out, because I've also been in those situations where someone middlemans or mends a relationship, but you really don't know how it is until you get around or speak to the person directly. So it's still that little bit of unknown intention. So I hope they do work it out. And I hope Ye shows up on stream because who doesn't want to see Ye and Kai just chop it up on screen, man. Two great guys doing their thing. And um, hey, that's that's all I got to say on that. But who cares about my random opinions? But if you do and you want to hear more, make sure you subscribe, hit the like, hit the dislike, make a comment, whatever's going to help me be in the algorithm to bring you some more stuff, uh, some more dope interviews. And um, thanks for rocking with me. Uh, just Dale and I'm out.